Welcome to Rise to the Equation, and welcome to my first video. Since I love math and chess, I thought it would be fitting to kick things off with a combination of the two. So here we go. As you can see, we have all the chess pieces in their standard positions. However, Bobby Fischer came up with a popular variant called Chess 960, in which the pieces are scrambled. Let's look at a few examples. One such position might look like this. Notice that the pawns stay in their original positions and both sides' pieces are arranged the same way. Here's another position. Notice that the king must be between the two rooks in order to allow for castling in both directions. And just like standard chess, one bishop is assigned to a light square, the other to a dark square. Apart from those two conditions, any arrangement is valid in chess 960. Here's one more position. I could continue with literally 957 more positions, but I think this is a good enough. The real question I want to answer in this video is, how do we know there are 960 total starting positions? Did somebody with a little too much time on his hands count them out by hand, one by one? Probably not. The secret is to use some elementary principles from combinatorics. Before I show the solution, why don't you pause the video and see if you can prove that Chess 960 has 960 starting positions. Okay, so I've cleared the board, including the pawns, since they aren't a factor in the calculation. Let's start arranging the pieces, starting with the bishops. The light-squared bishop will have four squares to choose from, so we'll randomly assign white's bishop to, say, b1. Black's bishop will go to g8. The dark-squared bishops will likewise have four squares, so we'll assign them to g1 and b8. Now, using the multiplication principle in counting, we know that the total number of positions for the bishops is 16, which is just the product of the number of squares each individual bishop can be assigned. Next come the knights. The first knight will have six squares to choose from, so I'll randomly assign the white and black knights to their destination squares c1 and c8. The second knight will have five remaining squares to choose from, so I'll assign white and black to d1 and d8 respectively. Using the same counting principle as before, the total positions is just 6 times 5 equals 30, right? Not quite. True to form, the knights are slightly tricky. The knights are actually indistinguishable, meaning that for any given position, they could be interchanged without having any effect on the total number of positions. That means we need to cut the total in half. Another way to look at this is, how many ways can we choose two squares for the knights from a total of six? The answer is 6 choose 2, which is 15, or the number of combinations of 6 squares taken two at a time. The queen is actually the easiest to work with. She has any one of four remaining squares to occupy, so I'll randomly assign white's queen to h1 and black's to h8. That's a total of four positions. Finally, the rooks and the king which I grouped together since they actually act as a single unit. Since they have three remaining squares, and since the king must go between the rooks in order to ensure castling on both sides of the board, there's only one position left that they can occupy. Now we're ready to use the multiplication principle for all the pieces. The bishops, as you recall, have 16 starting positions. The knights have 15, the queen has four, and the king and rooks have one. What's the product of those four numbers? You guessed it, 960. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. Also, I'd love to get your feedback, so leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.